All right, what's up everybody? This is Zircon again with a new music production tutorial. I had to think really hard about what I wanted to cover because I've had a lot of requests since my last set of tutorials, and I've decided on covering Zebra 2, which is a software synthesizer for Mac and Windows. Anyway, I've been using this for years. It's my all-time favorite synth. Uh, not only is it extremely powerful, but it's also really easy to use. So um, there's a lot of stuff to cover, and I'd like to start with just the basic operation of the synth, as well as the oscillators and the oscillator manipulation. Now this is the Patches tab. You can see there's Perform, Synthesis, and Patches. Um, in Patches, you have a browser to the left. You can uh, browse nested folders. And on the right, you have the actual list of patches you can load. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can right click to mark some patches as favorites or junk. If they're junk, they actually get uh, hidden. And if they're favorites, they get a little icon like this. And you can click show junk if I mark this as junk and then show it. You can unjunk it. Anyway, so this is very self explanatory. Now, the perform page is pretty useful. So let's say I select DM plucked. This is influenced by uh, Dead Mouse. If we go to perform, it shows you four XY controllers. So there's a parameter mapped to each of these. Now this, is, this doesn't happen by default. You can actually set this up yourself. As you're downloading Zebra patches or even looking at the factory library, you'll notice that a lot of this is pre-mapped. So as you move this around, and these can be assigned to MIDI controllers or a hardware XY controller, this allows you to manipulate the sound without actually going into the synthesis. So for example, So it's very useful, and then of course if you want to reset it, you can just load the patch again. But this isn't really the exciting stuff. This is the exciting stuff, the synthesis page. So let me load up the initialize patch first, under local, down here. I have a lot of patches for this. These are actually almost all free patches, anyway. So you'll see this screen here is where all the action takes place, pretty much. In the middle you have a matrix, and this looks like a modulation matrix, but it really isn't. This is where you drag and drop all these modules, so things like comb filters, high pass, low pass, oscillators, noise generation, wave shaping and distortion, it all goes here. So the first thing to notice is that there are a whole lot of slots. You can really fill this thing up and it's very easy to drag stuff around. You can mute things by double clicking on them or you can remove them entirely by right clicking and hitting remove. But the nice thing about this is that let's say you're editing two oscillators and you detune one, and you play it, and you decide you don't like it. You can remove it, but then when you reinitialize it, it's the same as it was before for this particular patch. So this is really nice because it allows you to do a whole lot of different variations and mess around, experiment, without losing your progress when you're working on something. So for now, we'll go back to one oscillator. Now you may have noticed that when I added the second oscillator, it appeared on the left. This is probably the single best feature of Zebra. So I have oscillator one right now. It's the only oscillator on here, so it appears on the left. I only have one envelope. You can see here at the bottom, envelope one. And I have one LFO, which is by default linked to vibrato. The point is that it only shows what you're using. So if I add four oscillators, noise, then you get a ton of stuff on the left. But unlike other synthesizers that would show all of this stuff by default, it only shows what you're using. And I can't emphasize that enough. So if you're looking at a complex patch, all you have to do is remove or mute the elements that you don't care to look at and bring them back when you're ready. So the left side gets all of the sound generation, filtering, and effects, pretty much. And by when, effect, when I say effects, I mean things like uh, wave shaping, not reverb or chorus. That actually comes later. On the right side, you have modulation, like envelopes and LFOs. So to start with, let's look at an oscillator. By default, it's a saw wave. And at the bottom here, you'll notice all these different tabs. These are for going through uh, tons of different features, but for now, all you need to look at is oscillator one, which corresponds to what I have here. So in the middle, you have 
the basic waveform. And you can see that there are actually 16 slots here. That doesn't mean it's generating 16 voices. You can hear it's not. That's just one. Uh, this is wavetable synthesis, basically. So you can, by right-clicking and dragging, move any of these points. So I'm just left-clicking here. So if I do this, it's going to sound very thin. Whereas if I actually drew a square wave, right click allows you to insert a point, it's going to sound, whoops, like a square wave. But I'll remove that for now. So the nice thing about this is, you can have up to 16 waves in just a single oscillator, and you can actually morph between them. So that if you look in the upper left, the wave knob controls which wave is being displayed at any time, and which is actually being used. If I click here in the middle, you'll notice in the upper left that the wave knob is moving. And likewise, if I move the wave knob, it cycles through on the bottom. So even just using this alone, you can get all sorts of different sounds. So let's say I start with a, uh, we'll start with a saw wave. Then on the right, I'll draw a square wave. Now a very simple feature is holding Alt, clicking on one side, and then left clicking on the other side. You can see it actually morphed between them. So now I have a whole bunch of different morphs between a saw and a square wave. So now if I put my cursor in the middle, to wave 8, that's the wave knob, you get a cross between a saw and a square, so obviously that's not too exciting. But now, if I move the wave knob while I hold the note down, the synth actually morphs the sound to accommodate during the note. And the nice thing is that you can actually modulate this with an LFO or an envelope, and we'll get to that just a little bit later. But I want to show you more about how to draw different waveforms. Let's first initialize again, so we clear what we just did. And then look at this menu here. Geomorph, Spectromorph, Geoblend, and Spectroblend. Believe it or not, these are all just methods of editing the harmonics of any oscillator. By default, what you see or what you draw is what you get. So it looks like a saw wave, it sounds like a saw wave. If you go to Spectroblend, you get what most people would uh, think of when they think of a frequency spectrum. So the low frequencies are on the left, the high ones are on the right. So if I do something relatively uh, left heavy, you get a, a sine wave or something close to it. As you fill up the frequencies, you get a more full featured waveform. So this is really additive synthesis. You're taking the harmonics that you want and editing them to your liking. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with this, and you can of course morph. So if I do this on one page, at the end, wave 16, hold alt, morph between them, now you have a bunch of crazy waveforms. Maybe not that useful, but they're still crazy. Anyway, again, quick reinitialization. The other two modes, in my opinion, are less useful. The GeoBlend looks like the SpectroBlend, but in actuality what it's doing is it's letting you draw a waveform like you did before. You can see this sort of looks like a saw wave, except it's, sort of, it's just a different tool and a different view of it. Likewise, the SpectroMorph looks like the GeoMorph, but in actuality the left side is the low frequencies and the right side is the high frequencies. So. If I do this, again, we go right back to having the sine wave. It's basically between Geomorph and SpectroBlend in terms of ease of use, but the other two modes can be useful too. Now some of the other features, just real quick in here, you have the key gain, so you can control if the, syn if the oscillator, just this one oscillator, gets louder or softer at particular ranges on the keyboard, or at certain velocities if you want it to react in a special way. Normalizing increases the volume. Resolution makes it alias-less, or Elias, or however you want to say it. And then key scaling, of course, is for when you want to do weird tuning stuff. Let's bring it back to 100.